Hello class, today we're going to be look starting chapter 16, which is on population genetics and speciation. So in this, um, we're going to go a little further in our evolution study and look at a whole population of a species and see how variations can happen over time. Um, so beginning of chapter 16, we've got some terms to know. Population genetics is the study of evolution from a genetic point of view. So we've talked about this a little bit before, but looking at the genes that are available in a population or in a species and seeing how they get distributed over time. Microevolution is evolution at the genetic level and looking at that small changes over time. And a bell curve, which um, traits follow a bell curve is on your notes packet. Uh, and most members of the population will have similar traits. So most of them will be kind of in the middle or have a similar um, genetic trait, I guess you say, or genetic set of traits. And only a few of these individuals are going to be at the extremes. Now that um, bell curve can shift from one side to the other. We'll look at that in a later section. So here's your example. You have this picture in your notes packet as well. Um, so most of the organisms are the same as the others, but there's some that are going to be at the extreme level. So if we're looking at size of this fish, most of them are in the medium size. There could be some that are really large, and there could be some that are really small. Some of those could become more beneficial for the uh, fish over time based on predators, maybe, or food supply, things like that. And so maybe all of a sudden, um, over a period of time, it will be better to be a small-sized fish, and you'll see more of them being small and fewer of them being the other two sizes, medium or large. So causes of variation, one would be mutation. So an example here, you can see a change in the um, sequence of DNA. We have number two, recombination, which is when crossing over an independent assortment occur, and that's back from chapter 10 and also last chapter that we talked about that a little as well. So genetic variation occurs by these two methods, and if you have more genetic variation, you have a greater chance of that species surviving. And then number three is random pairing of gametes, so it's a random combination of the sex cells. And those that combine successfully are going to have offspring. So a few more terms here. Gene pool is the total genetic information available in the population. So you're looking at all of your organisms. If you look at the picture below, all of your particular population, the organisms in your population, and you're looking at the traits that they have to pass on. Allele frequency is the number of a certain allele, whether it's big B or little b or um, dominant or recessive, divided by the total number of alleles in the population. So our equation is number of allele for big A divided by the total number of big A and little a combined. You're basically looking at a proportion. So an example, half a population of four clocks are red and half are white. What is the frequency of the little r allele? So it would be 0.5 or 50 percent. Okay, phenotype frequency is the number of individuals with a particular phenotype divided by the total number of individuals that are available in the population. So in this case, sorry, we can look at that picture there. You have red and white. Combine, you get pink. Um, and it's in our F2 generation. You can kind of see that process. We talked about that in a past chapter. Uh, in a phenotype frequency, we're looking at, in this case, number of red flowers divided by the total number of individuals. So the number of red flowers is 9 in our picture there, divided by the total number of flowers, which is 36. And that'll be 25% of them being um, showing red, 25% of the population. So um, our last thing for this set of notes is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Now Hardy-Weinberg is an ideal hypothetical population. In this case there would be no evolution that happens, no, no changing over time. That part's already typed in for you on your notes packet. There are five ideal conditions that must happen in order for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to occur. There's no net mutations, meaning there's absolutely no mutations that occur in the DNA, RNA, or amino acid sequence. No one enters or leaves the population. Emigration, immigration, none of that happening. The population has to be very large because you'd have a lot more genetic opportunities. The large gene pool is important here. Individuals mate randomly. There's no selection. So it's not like, um, if you're looking out in nature, it's not like one organism is stronger and gets more um, opportunity to mate. It's not like um, they fight for their mate. It's just a random mating. 
And then number five, there's no natural selection. Is this possible? Not at all. Um, we're going to go through those on another set of notes of what actually happens. This is your ideal situation saying that we don't need evolution to happen because ideally we've got um, kind of a perfect population for species.